All right, let's talk about live betting. Let's talk about betting both sides. I've done a video about this, a few videos about this over the last month or so. It's the only thing I've ever found to actually work pretty darn reliably when it comes to betting these games. And it involves taking advantage of live game line fluctuations and lead changes. And the reason why it, it can be done and it does pretty well is that we're not just guessing that a team is going to come back uh, in a game because they're down. We're not just taking a good line with any team that's down. We're looking at the algorithm to try to help guide us about who's supposed to win the game. Because who's supposed to win the game according to the algorithm, which is usually pretty darn good. You know, you see a lot of 80 to 90% stuff when it comes to home teams, especially. It's pretty darn good. And so if you're going with the team, especially when it's higher up on this list, if you're going with that team, that team wins a lot. You can see that so far today, We've won the top nine games in here. Now, they're all at pretty bad lines, but it doesn't mean that they were at bad lines the entire game. There might have been times when they were down and their line fluctuated to something much, 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 much better. So what we're looking for is that the games that are in progress right now, the college basketball games, and we, we use college basketball because there's so many games going on daily and there's a lot of good stats that we have on them. And it's just a really good sport for doing this because basketball games are long and often have lead fluctuations. So we're going to look at these games and we're going to say, all right, well, in any of these games or any of these teams down right now, early enough in the game where it's worthy of wagering on them to come back at a good line, anything over plus 100 for those teams. Well, let's see, just glancing, it looks like that's not a bettable game. What's going on here? Louisiana Tech and FIU, but there's only four minutes left, but who's supposed to win that game? Let's check. Louisiana Tech, away, don't know if it's a natural away game or whether it's a tournament game. They had a really even line. It was supposed to be kind of close anyway. They are away, whatever that means. So it's too close of a game anyway. So it's not a good pick because there's not enough time left. And we just, you know, we don't know who's going to win anyway. So really because of the time. Minnesota and Nebraska. Now, I already made action on this game. I have Nebraska. And you know what line I have Nebraska at? I have them at plus 124. Notice they are minus 150 right now. And plus 118 is what Minnesota has as a line right now. Five and a half minutes left in the game. I can secure money. I can secure either 0.18 units or 0.24 units, depending on who actually wins this game. If I make the same wager, I think it was like, I think it was like 75 bucks. What was it? It was, uh, yeah, it's 75 bucks. So if I bet 75 bucks right now on Minnesota, I guarantee myself some profit. Right. It's not going to be 75 bucks, it's going to be like 15 bucks, 10 bucks, whatever it's going to be um, when you figure out the percentage. Now, this is where a lot of the art of the live betting comes in. So in this game, what did it say was supposed to happen according to the algorithm? It said Nebraska way up here, better strength of schedule, 21 percent margin at home, even though it's probably a tournament game. All these things that are great for this team supposed to win that game. So when I saw them early on in the first half down, and I look at them now, they're plus 134. When I saw them down um, and they were plus 124, I took it early on figuring they're probably going to come back. And that means Minnesota, who was not a favorite anyway. Nebraska was minus 245. So if Nebraska in these last few minutes here really comes back and takes the lead, gets up by a few with like two minutes left and the betting is still open, that's when Minnesota is going to be at a really, really, really high positive line. And you get a lot more value trying to get them to win the game late because you'll get them at much more than plus 110 or whatever it is now. So I'm going to wait until we get down to like three minutes. Hopefully Minnesota doesn't go on a run. That would cost me my entire wager and that would kind of be bad gambling. Uh, so technically I should take something now, but I'm yeah, because Nebraska is so high on this list, I really feel like they're the they're the solid pick that the algorithm says. So even though they're only a tiny bit injured, they they got a good shot. So we're going to sit and we're going to wait. And let's see what other games are going on. Here we have LSU in Georgia. Who's supposed to win that game? LSU, way down here though, at a margin of only 1.8. So that's basically a toss-up and they're a little bit injured. So this game can really go anyway. Well, where is that game? It's in the second half, so there's not enough time left. Uh, it's not enough time left to really have too many lead changes, even though they could only down four points. So 
This one will pass, but it's close. If this was in the first half, we'd probably take either one of these teams at better than plus 150 and then see if there's a lead change in this type of game. St. Peter's and Ryder. Oh, I think Ryder's supposed to win this game. Wait a minute, this might be bettable. Yeah, Ryder is supposed to win this game at a 17% margin. And right now, they're down by eight with enough time left. 11.45 is enough for an eight-point lead. They're at plus 255. Guess who's getting bet on? Ryder is. So let's go on my phone. Oh, I, oh do I not have location information again? <laughs> no, it is working. Phone is actually working. So we're going down to that game and we're finding Ryder and Ryder is 255 and I'm going to throw like 25 bucks on it. Just it's it's not early enough in the game where I want to put a bunch on it, but 255 is a really good line. And if they start a run and come back here, watch how fast these lines switch. That's why it's such an optimal bet right now, even though they're down eight points, is you're talking two and a half to one. If they start to come back, boy, are we going to get paid there at least a unit and a half because you'll, you'll see what happens to St. Peter's line. So we'll see. Now let's go back and check up on this game. Uh-oh, four-point lead now. We really need Nebraska to come back and not, not keep going down because that will cost us that bet. Uh, as you can see, I, I could have guaranteed money. Now I can't guarantee money because they're at minus 178. So now we're kind of at a whim of a late game. And you really got to take into account the time of the game and how much is left. It's how much time you're giving yourself to have a lead change. So probably would have been more advisable to take uh, to take the guaranteed plus 118 that was up there when we were earlier doing the video. What else do we have? We've got a three-point game where, yeah, we have Rice in this game. This is not, not accurate lines. Like anybody down three with eight minutes left should not be minus 620. Like that, that's a distortion. And that's because there's a ton of money on rice right now, clearly ton of money on rice right now. And so the odds makers are really, really not wanting to put any more money on rice. So they're making this line essentially unbettable, which makes this very interesting. Now, where is this on the list? TSA. Right. So that's way up at the top of 20% margin. Yeah, there is no reason why Texas San Antonio should be doing anything in this game. And that's why these lines are so out there. So given that the algorithm doesn't really bring any of this, they might continue to go down and it might not be worth any of this. Oklahoma and Oklahoma State. Let's check that out. That has Oklahoma State, but they're injured. Okay. And really close margin anyway. And we're strict the schedule. This gives a game that can go anyway. Even if it's a true home game because there's a lot of Oklahoma and going on there. So, eh, I mean, it's second half, though, it's true. Look at how low scoring this game is. I'm sure the injuries are having something to do with that. It's almost worth it because um, five points is not that much given that something's wrong in this game. And, and maybe that injuries are offensive on Oklahoma State. <laughs> offensive. Uh, you know, we could see, like, where is that? State. What are these injuries? 50% game time decision. Did this guy go and he had a wrist? Not affecting a shooting. And then personal means probably out. So there were two guys. And one of them's got a bad wrist, which has got to affect shooting. I haven't seen the wrist injury up there too much in, in college basketball, but that's got to affect it. So um, th there's some juiciness here in this line. But we'll stay away for now. I don't know what to want to have happen there. There's not a lot of time left, too. Oregon State, Arizona State game that starts later. Has Arizona State doesn't look like there's any value there because their line is awful. Northern Arizona, Montana State is the last one. Northern Arizona, Montana State is here. Montana State has a worse strength of schedule. And that's something to watch out for that Northern Arizona might give them more of a game. So, but it's, it's really tough. So there isn't really that much coming down the pike. Now let's go back to what is happening right now. Ryder is still down by nine. So we're wanting Ryder to come back. Nebraska is down by three now instead of four, which is good. We'll see if they can come back here as this time goes down. And that's just kind of how it works is you sit back and you watch and, you know, you can try to do it in hockey too. Um, 
And hockey's been an interesting day for that because Anaheim started off to a one nothing lead and they were a big underdog, as you can see. Uh, Chicago was up by a couple goals and they were a huge underdog. Minnesota was an underdog and they won today. I have this in the uh, NHL algorithm, actually. So I said play all three underdogs. You lost with Chicago, but it was a good game for betting both sides because of the massive fluctuations in money line when, Al when uh, Stalock was holding them off and Chicago was up 2 nothing. And you get a nice win with Minnesota, at least, which was the number one pick of the day, even though it didn't pick it by raw adjusted power. And then in this game, it's a tough game. Um, does say Vancouver wins, but with the bad goaltenders, you probably expect some more goals in that game. All right, so that's kind of the update here for Wednesday night. Um, yeah, I'm still wanting to do videos to get things done, but but it's going to be tough to convince me to do any baseball, honestly. Maybe I will feel bad and want to set it up, but I just – I want to get away, honestly, even though I want to give advice about this, because at this point, we've done enough with the college basketball algorithm, and it's the right time of year for this, that I feel really confident in telling you this thing's pretty darn awesome, and it's good to, to at least use it when you're handicapping the games, taking a look at what's coming out, and then how to play them, right, because it's supposed to help, and it has helped whenever I've sat down and really paid attention to this and not try to bet against it and stay with it, and usually things like Nebraska- not base basketball. Wait a minute. Live now. Yeah, we do, we do want live now basketball. Now let's go back to NCAA. Usually you have things like, yeah, ooh, still down by four. Um, we'll see if they do or not. And Ryder down by nine. We'll see if these things happen. All right. Good luck, everybody. May all your picks be winning. May all your, may you win. May there be lead changes galore and you win if you bet both sides of the game because that's really what this video is about. All right. Good luck.